Hi, it's Mindy. Hey, I'm gonna be doing a bunny sculpture, head, a bunny head sculpture. And I have never used these wiggle eyes before. So I picked some up and I wanted just kind of before I um, do this, I just wanna do a little experiment on how to best um, install these wiggle eyes in an air dry clay project, okay? So um, these are doll eyes, I think, there's a backing, you know, that you probably snap it to um, when you put it in fabric. But um, so there's, a, you know, there's a bit of an iris and a pupil. Okay, so um, I don't know how bunny, how big my bunny's going to end up being. So I don't even know if this is going to be the right size. I, they're available in a lot of different sizes. Um, so. Um, th this size might not be right, but this is just going to be kind of a little experiment to see how to seat the, um, the, the eyeball, wiggle, wiggle eye, into the clay. So let's, let's see. My, my question is, I wonder if I should do it when the clay is wet, you know? When, when the clay is still wet, or should I form the area around the eye, let the clay dry, and then drill a hole and seed it that way? I mean, I could always clip this off, right, and glue it on. So I, I guess I'm trying to figure that out. So I thought, why not make a video? Because maybe you're wondering the same thing. So later today, I have the afternoon off. Later today, I'm gonna to work on this bunny head and I think I want it to be about a total with ears from the chest to the ears, maybe about, I don't know, maybe like 12 inches. So I'm not sure if this is gonna be the right size um, eyeball or not. And that's fine, and that's fine. I can always make the eyeball out of clay and paint it. And, and I'm not putting an armature behind it either. So, okay. So let's see. Let me get some tools over here. So first, I think I want to entertain the idea of... Um, It, just putting it into wet clay, all right? And I have no idea if this is, it's probably way too big of a slit, but that's okay. Open it up and I know obviously I wouldn't be able to do that to that degree if I had an armature behind it but I don't so let's do this I mean I could just I could have just opened that up with a kind of a flat tool to pull that um, what would be like the lower lid, you know, that kind of got pushed. Huh. Let's see. Obviously, I could really play a lot with the details, okay? Um, you know, I'm just kind of chuffed. It was not hard at all. Looks like a bunny eye, doesn't it? Maybe not quite so... I made that too long.
You know, and I could do a lot more carving, but that was not hard, was it? All right, well, let's go to option. It's probably what I'm gonna do. All right, so then the second thing would be if I, made a hole I guess I would make the hole in advance and um, let it dry and then drop this in there oh I don't know, it just seems, you know, um, because I've seen people who, you know, okay, so they come back and they add a little log and then blend in that eyelid and stuff. And I guess, I guess that makes sense. I don't know, it just seems like, and I guess if you wanted to, um, if you realized you needed more material on the eyelid. Listen, I'm not very well prepared here today. Um, yeah, so you could do this. If you wanted to have your eyelid. And you would do this after. So I'm really getting, I'm going all over the place here. But... So once you install that thing, that thing, you know, I think I, I think it's just, I think the answer is to put it in when it's wet, right? What do you think? Am I wrong about that? Stick it in there. Okay, so let's say that we can't move this. This is the way we have to do it, okay? Let's say there's a hard armature behind here. We have a 12 inch bunny. And actually, um, there might be tin foil behind it, so this might be a little bit harder than I'm making it look. Let's pull it out. Well, and the other thing is I could cut that stem off of that eyeball. Humble fingers here. And I want to get it in at the right angle, otherwise he's gonna have Marty Feldman eyes. Okay, so this is with kind of a built up eyelid, right? I'm not worried about the clay or paint getting on the um, on the plastic eyeball because that will that'll scrape right off. Well, we probably have to be careful not to scrape too hard. It's plastic versus glass. Some of the eyes you can get are glass, and that's probably one of the benefits of it. Is more durable than plastic. But I think a wet paintbrush is really one of your best smoothing tools. So then from the bottom, I have to push this lid up, depending on how you want those eyes to look, right? Yeah, maybe I would have to add a little coil on the bottom. So thanks for being along as I go through my process here. This is just, this is the reality of art, right? It is just not being afraid to experiment. And not always counting on someone else to do the work for you, right? Why not do it yourself? Then you know. All right, let's see.
And the other thing is, um, it, it does really help to look at a reference image, um, depending on what animal or creature you're, you're trying to sculpt, because animal eyes are not exactly like human eyes. They have a little bit of a different shape, less of the white shows, a lot of times none of the white shows. So, I mean, I think you're, you're starting to get the idea here, right? So I guess what I ended up kind of illustrating is two things. N not so much using a dry, um, drilling into a dry piece. Um, and I'm sure that is an option for sure, right? For not even eyes, but other whatever things you could put, put onto your clay crystals or beads or whatever. And I have drilled into clay um, to put in ears that I already made, you know, that we're drawing as a separate piece, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, all right, I'm going to stop because you know there's a lot of stuff I could keep doing to this, the, doing to this to add, to build up more of the clay. So I guess what it ended up showing you is this is as simple as putting a slit in the wet clay using my ball tool to ream it out a little, put that in there and then close it back in, use a wet finger, wet brush. It's as simple as that, right? Here I'm showing kind of basically the same thing, but then how to build the eyelid up even more. And you know, if this were, if this were some kind of a creature or, a human that you needed to put an extra eyelid on. So you see what I'm doing? You get the picture, right? This could even be the underside if it's something had big bags under its eyes. Okay, so these are just a couple of, I don't know, things I played around with today. So maybe that helps you, maybe it doesn't. Um, okay, so when you know when the, when when this were to dry, okay, um, you're gonna have to get your paint way inside there because if you paint, let's say this is a rabbit and it's a dark gray, okay? Paint all this, that inside in there um, kind of has to be addressed. You just kind of drop some watery paint in there and fill it up. Let, don't worry about this, dry it off. I mean, wipe off the the eyeball with um, a, just a wet cotton swab and a toothpick until you get it clean. So it will scratch. Plastic will scratch. Glass won't as easily. But um, anyway, I guess that's that's one of the benefits of doing when it's, you know, having a dry piece of clay, drilling it out because then you can paint dark inside there, drop the eye. And I guess that's one benefit of doing it that way. Right? Does that make sense? Anyway, I hope you got something out of this. Let me know and let me know if you have done these kinds of eyes and what your process is, okay? Thanks for watching.